But you can also argue, of course, the other side also says that this is also fighting for to give women who don't have the means the mm -hmm. choice. Uh, women like you and me, we certainly have the means to be able to mm -hmm. control our lives, to, yes. to choose to use contraceptives or not. Uh -huh. But women who are poor, who can't, who can't afford it, who don't have education, uh -huh. who don't understand the complexity uh -huh. of, yes. of family, that this is part of evening leveling the playing field. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? Okay. It is often said, uh, well, during the days of the campaign, we hear it that this uh, bill at that time is pro-women. Now, if one is pro-woman, then one must work for the good of the woman. That means her entire persona, her health, her development as a woman, her, her maternal role, as a matter of fact, in the home, because she is meant to be a uh, mother, not in the sense that she gives birth, but in the sense that she nurtures life as a big sister, as the, uh, the abbess of a, a monastery, uh, you know, as the ate of a family. She's meant to be a nurturer. And that one is also in the Constitution that we should protect the maternal role of women, which is connected again with the sanctity and the, her, uh, the, the strength of the family as the foundation. Now, why, why is it against women? Uh, poor and helpless and marginalized women, for that matter, as the bill says. Well, it says that they have no access, they cannot afford if they want to use contracep contraceptives. Now, if we are really helping them for their so-called reproductive health, then let's give them authentic health. What is, what is the meaning of that? Something which will not harm their bodies. It is so sensitive, the woman's body, so beautifully made to nurture that if you introduce substances that mm -hmm. will harm her and destroy her natural functions and bring her um, serious illnesses later on in her life, mm -hmm. which she might regret, and which the government will not fund. If a woman contracts cancer, for example, is she going to be given uh, the expensive treatment for that? The poor especially, who have no health care, who are not members of Phil Health. Mm -hmm. So where is the pro-women uh, attribute in that, in that respect? You see? Again, mm -hmm. it's so fascinating, glass half empty, half full <laughs> yes, argument, again. right? This yes, is yes, on, yes. on every side. There are two questions now that I'll throw at you that came in from social media that's connected because the foundation of a lot of the arguments that you've, you've put forward still is a very uh, conservative Catholic uh -huh, perspective, uh -huh, right? Yes. So Poppy Sunga on Twitter says, why should Catholic culture be given precedence in public matters over any other religious or cultural idea? And James Rice, also on Twitter, says, how can the CBCP justify hijacking the democratic process and imposing their own views on millions of non-Catholics? Okay. The same thing. Yes, how yes. Can, why should Catholic culture and norms um, Let's pre prevail, prevail over 100 million okay. Filipinos? Number one answer is, this is not a Catholic issue. The, 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 um, the pillars of arguments that we are bringing forth applies to any person, Catholic or not. Why? Because we are all the same. We have the same kind of bodies. We have the same needs, basic needs. Uh, we, we have the same dreams for, for health, for wellness, for what we call quality of life. So it's not a Catholic uh, affair, no. We, we speak for the human person as a person. But these particular views, though, are come stem from a conservative Catholic perspective. It so happens that the correct. church is the most vocal about right, it. Right. It's the okay. most vocal. So it is now um, perceived as a purely Catholic voice. It is not. The, the, the I see. Catholicity or universality of this, uh, these values applies to everyone. I'll give an example. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yes. It reflects everything that the church is saying. And the Universal Declaration is not a Catholic document. It's a universal document. This is an interesting reaction though, Joe. Um, Rainier Louis Bibona, also on Twitter, at Rainier Bona, says, um, Joe and Bong mistakes that giving accessibility to contraceptives is equal to forcing couples to use contraceptives. Mm -hmm. um, this is the choice. Again, we, yes, the choice. we took the word choice and, and um, looked at it from both sides. But is it the same way, just giving them, it's, it's like access to education. Okay. Um, some people will argue that talking about sex leads to more sex, and yet others mm -hmm. will say if you don't talk about it, uh, it will lead to a misunderstanding mm -hmm. and pro possibly pregnancy. Yes. Correct. Um, how, how do you? Um, okay. When we speak of uh, the Catholic culture, it really s strikes at the very 
essence of the individual person, every individual person. Now, um, we mustn't get lost there and say that it is a purely Catholic point of view. No? I, I mentioned the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, forcing to take contraception or allowing or tolerating or making it feasible or easy for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, if we really want to help for the good, for the well-being of a person or for his quality of life, for mm -hmm. example, as the, the law says, a safe and satisfying sex life, that's the, those are the words of the law. G give it to him. Yes, that is, mm -hmm. his, uh, uh, that is the kind of life that he wants to live. But are you going to give it to him uh, together with, with a... Um, uh, a price tag that says what weight don't you know we don't the bill doesn't say it the law doesn't say it don't you know that this comes with a, with a caveat that you must know that these are the side effects that women in America have died because of these uh, cancers everywhere and lawsuits and uh, damage suits uh, mm -hmm. settlements as a matter of fact for a lot of contraceptive devices which the law speaks about devices equipment and supplies mm -hmm. It's so broad that everything else comes in there. In there. Mm -hmm. Whatever else is there, out there, which probably FDA will welcome here mm -hmm. and pharmaceuticals will bring into this country, for which we will incidentally spend for our taxpayer money. You and see? You talked about the, sorry, I'll, I'll yes, let you finish. Yes, yes. So you talked about principles of law. This is, my understanding of it is that effectively, when you question this at the Supreme Court, you should be, who are the people who are aggrieved? There has to be an aggrieved yes. party, right? Yes. And technically, and again, I don't know if this is correct, but the aggrieved party would be an unborn child. Uh -huh. Is that, yes, um, yes. How, can, how can your son, your family file a petition for okay. an unborn mm -hmm. child? Is that a, 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 okay. a, a, legal, a good legal precedent? Uh -huh. This suit is a taxpayer suit. And uh, in the nature of a class suit, meaning to say that any person, any citizen, can bring a suit to assail or question a law mm -hmm. because it it matters to him. He's a taxpayer and he's a citizen. But you don't need to be an aggrieved. Uh, in the matter of being an aggrieved party to be able to have standing, right, legal to have, standing right. to question it in court, you you prove that you have legal standing. And here now, the petitioners here are husband and wife spouses with two minor young children. Correct. And so it will affect their marriage, okay. the way they relate to each other as spouses, and the children who will be going to school. And there's also a third um, petitioner here, which is the school, because the, the, the two um, young persons uh, own a school. I see. Uh, up to, which gives uh, education up to high school level. And so the law will cover the school in terms of mandatory uh, sex education. So they all, and so uh, there's also um, reference there that it is a it is a class suit, meaning it is brought in representation not only of themselves and their children, mm -hmm. but for all other individuals and couples who have similar interests. That's the nature of a class. What suit. do you think will happen now? Here, yes. Well, you know, Risa, the 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 issues that were brought up here in this petition are so. Uh, for the first time, these are first impression issues. Okay. Never before has uh, any petition been raised in the Supreme Court on such transcendental matter as this. And it is so substantially uh, important in our, in our uh, jurisprudence, for our, not only for our books, but more for the community, not okay. only on our time as we sit here, but it will affect future generations. That is why it is a, a case which will become probably, I hope, a landmark decision uh, for, for us. Uh, let me throw a question to you from Rocky Road. Um, was the filing of the petition by your son and his wife the next strategy of the Roman Catholic Church to clear the, the church of any insinuation it's meddling in politics? I guess two questions there uh -huh. is, yeah. are you speaking for the Catholic Church, number one, and two, um, is this part of a, a collective strategy? Well, you see, it's unfair to attribute this to the Catholic hierarchy. As Correct. Hierarchy. This is brought uh, by individuals who have right. the right. Uh, but you are legal it. counsel for CBC. Oh, yes, yes. I'm a okay. church volunteer, aside from You're my, a church you know, volunteer. my professional okay. life. So I assist in monitoring uh, legislation in Congress, okay. uh, things like that. But in this particular instance, I'm lawyering for two private citizens. citizens. Yes. Okay. 
And then I, I guess the, the flip side of it is other countries around the world. Um, it seems like this law, much as it moved fast in December, it actually stayed um, in Congress for almost 14, 14 years, yes. right? Yes. So it didn't, it really did take a long time to it. And we seem to be one of the last countries in the world to do that. Uh -huh. um, are we, are we doing, I, I have an idea how you'll respond to this already. <laughs> um, I like the twinkle <laughs> in your eyes. Uh, 